Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Last week we worked on our downward facing dog pose and this week we're going to do a little sequence that does involve a lot of downward facing dog pose. We're going to play with the idea of jumping the legs from the front of the mat back into our downward facing dog pose and jumping the legs and the feet forward again. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Before we do our dog pose, let's practice simply stretching the arms up. We're sitting in uh, Vajrasana, knees together, feet together. Perhaps you can squeeze the ankle bones in. I like to press my hands onto the outer heels there and squeeze those inner ankle bones in. Keep them in as the sitting bones settle on the heel bones. If that's really problematic for you, then um, potentially you could put a folded blanket between the buttocks and the heels. Of course, there are numerous ways of practicing Vajrasana or Virasana if the, the knees are really problematic. Sometimes just sitting on a chair is best. Fingers interlocked. Let the knuckles settle onto the crown of the head. Shoulders descend. And before we take the arms up, just feel into what you're doing here in the mid body. Notice that we're wanting to stay quite long in the lumbar spine rather than going into a strong lordosis here and pushing the belly forward. Can you draw the navel up and back towards the back abdominal wall, keeping this lumbar kidney area quite broad? So again, we've got the uh, fingers interlocked, knuckles are on the crown of the head. Draw the elbows back. So you feel your shoulder blades press in to the back ribs, not the ribs pressing forward, however. So as the elbows press back, shoulder blades engage, outer shoulder blades press in towards the rib cage. Then inhale, take your arms up, squeeze the elbow tips in, let the shoulder blades lift with the arms, but go on drawing the outer shoulder blades in and the lower tip of the shoulder blades pressing into your back. Once more, don't push the lumbar forward or the ribs forward. Keep the navel lifting up and drawing back towards your lumbar spine. Exhale the arms down. Note which interlock you've taken because we'll swap that in a moment. But rather than having the toes pointing back, let's do Vajrasana with the toes tucked under. So we're bringing in a little bit of a challenge here into the Achilles, which is of course then what we'll take into our dog pose. Toes tucked under, but with the heels vertically top the balls of the feet. Watch that your feet aren't, or your toes aren't too far back because that's gonna really, really hurt the toes. So you might need to lift the knees up, pull the heels back a little bit, and then place the knees on the floor as close as you can to the toes. So then you've got more of that vertical line. Arches of the feet will be stretching as well. Then we take the opposite interlock, opposite index finger on top, knuckles onto the crown and feel again what's happening in this mid body. Are you tending to thrust the belly forward? Is there that strong lordotic action in the lower back? Can you lift the front pelvic bones? Can you lift the navel, pubis to navel up? navel back towards the back abdominal wall. Once more with the knuckles on the crown, elbows back to feel that you're engaging the shoulder blades, pressing the lower tip of the shoulder blade into the back. Inhale, stretch the arms up, squeeze the elbow tips in and see if you can press the forearm bones back without thrusting the ribs forward. So forearm bones back, and the lower back ribs lifting well away from the pelvis as the lower front ribs are contained. And exhale the arms down and we're probably ready to uncurl our toes. So uncurl your toes, big toes touch knees apart and we'll prepare for our dog pose this way. Adho Mukha Virasana, broaden the palms. So you've got the entire disc of each palm pressing into the mat, 
specifically the knuckles of the index fingers as you move the hips back and down. Push into the hands, straighten the elbows, resist the forearms away from the floor. And as you push into the hands, feel as if you're stretching the mat forward away from the knees and moving your hips back and down. The tricep muscles rolling down enough that you feel this inner upper arm, the deltoid area, lifting up towards the ceiling, creating some space there around the neck. And then you can raise the head up, book your hands in and come up to sit. What can be really helpful as we worked with last week in our downward facing dog pose class is to put height underneath our hands and um, sometimes the bricks on top of the mat will slip. So I find it helpful to put the bricks underneath the mat Make sure they're shoulder width apart and we'll use those bricks underneath our hands. So let's come to Uttanasana to start. Take your feet as wide as the hips. If you feel stiff, they can be a little wider. The width of the mat is fine. Place the hands onto your bricks. Perhaps you need to be on the fingertips. Draw the chest forward. As the chest lengthens forward, we should feel we've got Length on the front of the body. Sternum forward, shoulder tips back towards the hips, open the back of the knees. Then press the palms into your bricks, bend the knees and we'll step back for our first dog pose. Step the legs back, lift up the sitting bones and draw the heels down. Feel that you're feeding the arms and the hands forward into the bricks, forward into the floor. You're stretching the mat forward away from the feet through the action of the arms and the hands. The torso is lifting well away from the arms. And the legs are pressing back as you're pushing into the feet. You're trying to stretch the mat back away from the hands. Now, as we prepare to jump the feet towards the hands, look forward and we need to move the shoulders forward in the direction of the hands as we consider jumping. So let's play with that for a bit. Lift your heels, move your shoulders forward, almost as if they're coming vertically top the wrists here. And then back again to your dog pose, forward again, and then back. This time let's bend the knees to propel ourselves. So keeping the feet as they are in our dog pose uh, stance, propel your body forward as you straighten the knees, shoulders come forward. Again, bend the knees, pull the hips back. And once more as you straighten the knees, propel your body forward, shoulders come forward. And then back, this time we'll spring forward, feet towards the hands. Inhale and exhale. Jump forward. So the feet can come to land behind the line of the bricks and the feet come together. Look forward, shoulder tips back. Now to jump the legs back together. Bend the knees. As we spring the legs back, let's separate the feet to hip width. Inhale. You've got to lean forward into the hands. Let the shoulders come well beyond the line of the wrists. Exhale. Pick the feet up and kick the legs back. Land there with the feet hip width apart in your dog pose. Let's come down, have a rest. Relax the arms for a moment. Rest the head down. Now let's go again. Reach the arms forward. Hands onto your bricks. Lift yourself into your dog pose. And then as we prepare to spring the legs forward, 
lift the heels up, bend the knees, and feel into that idea of springing. You want to spring off the feet with the knees bent, propelling yourself forward, but also the shoulders coming forward over the line of the wrists. Inhale, exhale, spring forward, chest forward. Let's jump back again. Inhale, the shoulders come forward as you prepare to spring. Exhale, pick the feet up, jump the feet back, hip width apart. Jump forward again, bend the knees. Inhale, you look forward, that's going to help. Exhale, spring forward, breastbone forward. Inhale, bend the knees and exhale, jump back. Again, come down onto your knees and have a rest. Using these bricks underneath our hands can really help with the um, jumping. But what we're going to do is challenge ourselves still with the hands on the height. We're going to use a brick to jump over. Now you could have it flat, which is obviously the lower level, the lower lowest height uh, to jump over, or you could take it up to its blade shape. This is going to be halfway between where the hands and the feet are placed in your dog pose. Let's come into our dog pose. Lift the hips and get yourself steady here. Notice your breath. So clearly we need to pick the feet up. As we consider jumping forward, think about lifting the heels up towards the buttocks as you jump the feet up and over the brick. Also looking forward. So let's bend the knees, get ready to spring. You're looking forward, the feet are going to jump up and over the brick. Inhale, exhale, feet together. And then we want to jump the feet up and over the brick to move back to our dog pose. Inhale, exhale, kick the heels up and back. Forward, look forward, inhale, bend your knees, exhale, up and over the brick. Again, let's kick back, inhale, bend the knees and pick the heels up and over the brick as you exhale to your dog pose. And then you can come down and again have a rest. The more confident you feel with that springing action, the more height you can use. So you can challenge yourself with a couple of bricks stacked like this. And of course, if you've only got two bricks and you're already using them underneath your hands, you'll need to find something else to give yourself that challenge of jumping over something. Bear in mind, we're not jumping the feet around the edges of the bricks. We're wanting to jump them up and over, jumping back and then forward again. Let's see how we go. Come to your dog pose. And so again, we want to use the breath to help us. Lift the heels, bend the knees, prepare to jump forward, look forward towards the hands. Remember our shoulders need to move forward as we spring the legs. Inhale, exhale, kick the heels up towards the buttocks and over the bricks. Same idea as we kick back. The heels need to come up towards the buttocks. Inhale, lean into the hands as you exhale, heels up and over, back to your dog pose. Again, inhale, exhale, up and over, inhale, exhale, up and over. <laughs> if your bricks unstack themselves, stack them again. Let's do one more up and over, forward and back, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. <laughs> and then you can come down and have a rest. So these bricks can go to the side 
as you rest your head down. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.